Hey guys, today I'm going to give you a prime example of why MTG speculation slash MTG finance no longer it's no longer the golden days. So five or seven, five to seven years ago, you could buy pretty much any modern staple and they would just continue to go up in price. Mainly due to two factors, there were more people playing magic. And well, not more people, the popul the growth of magic in terms of player base was exponential. Right now it's kind of just leveled off. So the player base was growing faster and faster and there was a limited supply of cards. And most importantly, they did not reprint any of the staples. So you kind of knew that if you just held on to a card, one day it would be worth some money. So back five, even five years ago, people were saying, oh, I'm amazing at MTG Finance. When in fact, you could just pick a random card and as long as it saw some play, it would go up in price. Now, let's talk about the supply part because that's very critical for you to understand. Since RTR happened and these cards, beck and call, as well as breaking and entering, they are RTR cards. They are Dragon Maze. They are cards that are newer than RTR. Cards from RTR on are just dirt cheap. And the reason is they overprinted it. You can still get boosted boxes of RTR in my locals for $80 cash. You can get them online for $85. There are multiple vendors who, if you buy cases, you can get them for under $80 a box. And people just can't get rid of it. Gate crash on Dave and Adams, I believe today it's under $70, like $68 for gate crash. And that has shock lines in it, right? So RTR. Any set from RTR on, the boxes are just dirt cheap. And it is due to print run. It's due to the fact that they were printing as if the player player base would grow exponentially, which it has not. Now, today, if you wanted to make money from speculating on this, very difficult. The rules are completely different. They can reprint Hamagoyf every modern master set. So every two years, Tamagoy will get a reprint. And this has happened for the last six years. Eternal Masters. They can not only reprint individual cards, they can reprint entire boxes or have another run. No matter how you define it, there was, there's a reason these Eternal Masters boxes are 180 or below online, right? I don't care if it's a second print run. I don't care if it's like distributions hold, uh, distributors holding out. It doesn't matter if it came from Wizards Coast or the distribution level. None of that matters. The price is a price. The price is 180 on any of the major retail sites for Eternal Masters, which at one point was $250, $300 a box. And the reprints, right? The reprints are just so many. Uh, you have a whole set dedicated to reprints every two years now. You have Conspiracy also dedicated to reprints. You, or every year now, because you have Eternal Masters, then Modern, then Eternal, then Modern. You have From the Vault still going on, Commander, and the actual standard sets themselves can be a place that you can see reprinted cards. So add the danger of breaking and entering, add the danger of them changing the rules of this card. So that's what happened. The rule text of this card there were this 2,600 copies of this two months ago would have been a very good speculation. I can tell you that it would because you have two tier two decks and they are one of them relying on breaking and entering, the other one relying on beck and call that were in modern and they relied on the expertises. They were really fun to play with. Uh, you could throw out Grizzlebrand, especially breaking and entering. I played that for a little bit and it's a lot of fun. It's just like reanimator but like kind of were variant. So you can miss, it's not guaranteed, but that's kind of, that's the fun part of it. And then just beck and call is such OP. So they changed the rules of that. Kind of, un, I mean, it makes sense. Everyone thinks it's a good concept, but the rules have been the rules since Isochrome Scepter and Fire Nice. Brain in a Jar was a very famous deck recently. And they changed that. So when we talk about, when you talk about all of these 
interesting things that Wizards of the Coast can do to make sure you, you don't make any money from MTG Finance. There's too many. Like, if there's just one thing, like reprints, and you could track it, then you'd be like, okay, that makes sense. I can just track reprints, and that makes sense. Oh, ban, you know, ban list. They ban Gregory Grave Troll. Uh, people sometimes speculate on that one because it is a fun dredge deck. So you have all these factors that you didn't have five to ten years ago, or if you did have them, it was not as apparent. The double reprinting of Eternal Masters, the every year, every two years, Tamago would be reprinted, and every year we will get reprints. The horde of commander products, the reprints called anthologies, plane chase anthology, uh, commander anthology, and on top of everything else that's being printed they change the rules of the game to make some cards like this. I, I advise you not to buy this card because it is trash now. It was a good long-term speculation. I'm not going to lie. Two months ago, this would have been something I would buy Like at this price point, obviously. Uh, the price point is much lower than it used to be. But if the price point was reasonable and there was 2,600 copies of it, I might consider doing it. But I would never, ever consider doing it from now on because you don't want to be the loser of this. This guy's a loser. I mean, he has 26 copies of a card and no fault of his own. Wizards of Coast changed how the card would be played. And now the card is unplayable because the expertises don't work with it anymore. So those decks in modern no longer exist. There's no interest in this card. And now he's stuck with 2,600 copies of it. 2,600 plus copies of it. This might not be it. He might have even more and... He doesn't want to flood the market too much, I guess. It's really difficult to even make pennies and cents and from MTG Finance now. Like I've been saying that for a while. I've been saying that for probably three years now. And since I sold off all the legacy cards, I wasn't using. I mean, two reasons. A, I just don't see it. Like, if you want to play Magic, this will become a Magic player's game. And I accepted that three years ago, and I feel a lot better. I don't have any misconception that my Magic cards are not worth... They're not going to be worth more tomorrow than they are today for the majority of my Magic cards I currently own. And it's not like, oh, you know, hopefully I can retire off this, or hopefully I can make a dollar. If you ask most vendors, if you ask most vendors they have sold their personal collections and that that should tell you something that should tell you something i mean go ask them go ahead ask them you know ask the individual go to a gp ask the vendors you know oh you know how is it and if they're giving you a truthful honest re response they, they've been selling my friends and i have been fire selling well i fire i sold a ton of stuff three years ago for pretty cheap uh, but all that stuff got reprinted hunt Ma oh hunt master actually didn't get reprinted it's like the one card they get reprinted i just named but uh, Grizzle Brands, uh, I mean, you've seen the binder. All Even, even Fragtus has been reprinted, right? So anyway, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.